Welcome into another episode of Timekeepers, a show about dope watches. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a really bold but simple design from 7 Friday in the M1B01. Now, to me, this watch is the epitome of a modern day classic. While all of the M series watches from 7 Friday have their own version of this futuristic kind of appeal, this particular model feels a little bit more distilled. This is the only watch I've ever owned that seems to be totally overbuilt, but somehow in a way that still feels effortless. It's like it's trying way too hard and not at all at the exact same time. We'll talk about it. I'm Adam the Orlando Drummer and this is Timekeepers episode eight. Let's get into it. get our basic specs out of the way first. The M1B01 is 47 millimeters by 47.6 millimeters. And yes, that would be considered chunky territory for most watches. But the feel of this watch is surprisingly comfortable on the wrist and it's totally wearable for any practical setting. The case of this watch is made of polished stainless steel and it's powered by a customized Miyota 8215 engine and that has a 40 hour power reserve. This watch is water resistant and it features a scannable NFC chip on the case back. And of course that allows you to register the watch uh, and confirm its authenticity right on your phone. The watch featured in this video includes this blue denim strap, which we'll discuss a little bit later, but you should also know that this model comes with a stainless steel bracelet as an option, and that dresses up the aesthetic quite a bit. I think that one looks really good, and I definitely want to get my hands on it. Now, it's hard for me to know exactly where to start with a watch like this because there's just so much to look at initially, but let me get the obvious out of the way and talk about the color scheme. Now, there's a mixture of brushing styles and coatings on this watch, but the predominant feature that always catches my eye is the side of the case body, also known as the case band. This particular matte blue is such a cool color and that blue is accentuated in a few other clever spots on the face of the watch. Now keeping with 7 Friday's frequent automotive influence, take a look at the gunmetal flooring on the watch which is textured to resemble like a car floor mat. On top of this we have two layers of matte black and brushed rhodium that frame out the hour and the minute display. Now on top of these layers, you'll find a brushed central plate, which features the logo, and that is followed by a final brushed rectangular plate framing out the seconds meter. All of these layers, and there's a lot of them, contribute to the serious depth of this watch's design. With so much going on in the depth of this watch, in person, it's really a different experience. This is one of the few watches that I've ever filmed that's really hard to capture on video or even in photos. It just has this 3D effect that's really stunning in person. Now the strap on this watch is one of the most overbuilt pieces of the watch, and I mean that in a good way. If you've at all missed the days when jeans used to be made of 100% denim and they were like thick and rugged before they started adding all of that elastic, you'll love the strap on this watch. The denim feels like it's cut off of a really high-end pair of jeans from the 80s or the 90s, and it's the kind of quality that you might find on modern camping gear or outdoor gear. The strap is a hefty 28 millimeters, and it features this subtle leather strip down the center, which I think looks incredible. Now, there's a few other notable features of this watch that really demonstrate the attention to detail that 7 Friday is known for. First, we have the M logo engraved on the crown. Then there's the contrasting materials of the fixed loop and the free loop, one of them being denim and the other black leather. The inside of the strap features the same car mat texture that's found on the front of the watch, and the seconds meter is horizontal and moves like a meter of a gas tank as it's slowly being filled. The more you look at this watch, the more of these cool little details start to emerge. A lot of thought went into this piece, and it's not hard to appreciate it if you just take the time to study this thing for a minute. Personally, as I've mentioned on this channel many times before, I'm a huge fan of the vintage modern hybrid aesthetic. I tend to go for this look in my clothes, in my cars, my studio, and even the drum set behind me. It's one of the reasons that I love the 7 Friday brand so much. They borrow the best elements of the past and combine those classic features with really bold, 
futuristic, and some might even say risky design choices. Now this very concept is built into the nickname of this watch, the Urban Explorer. This of course brings up some imagery of, let's say a young guy making his way through New York City or some other industrialized metro area on a train or on a bus or just walking through an alley. And yeah, this is a pretty fitting watch to do that kind of thing in. But even in that setting of exploring a big modern city, Half of the fun of doing that is seeing, appreciating, and admiring things that were here long before you. New York, just as an example of a big city, isn't cool because of the digital billboard that is Times Square. It's not cool because of the shopping centers or the 6,000 Starbucks that you're going to walk past. It's a fun city to explore because it has a rich history within American culture, and it's a city full of character that's been earned over literally hundreds of years. So with this in mind, even the most urban of explorers are still participating in something old. We share so many experiences with the people that came before us, whether we realize it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. And while it's nice to celebrate the future that we're currently living in, we also can't do that without simultaneously celebrating the past. One of my favorite examples of this is actually from the automotive industry, because Think about the feeling that you get when you get in a really old car. You see the weird font on the buttons of the radio, or maybe you feel the strange contours and shapes of the handles and the buttons, the smell of the seats. All of these details haven't changed since the car was built, and by all means, you're having the same experience that someone had when they first drove that car off of the lot. 30, 40, or 50 years ago. And so in the spirit of shared experiences, we can't forget that we do this every time we play music as well. You're participating in an experience that is way, way older than you. We don't know exactly how long human beings have been playing music, but there are instruments as old as 40,000 years old. And obviously we could sing quite a bit before that. Now sure, the styles of music aren't the same because metal and EDM and trance music wasn't around when your great grandparents were alive, not to mention digital recording itself. But the feeling that you get when you listen to your favorite song, that experience that you have in that moment is totally unchanged. That is an old sacred feeling that you share with a whole lot of dead people. And this watch to me feels like a cohesive celebration or acknowledgement of things that are old and new. Whether we're getting into old cars, exploring urban cities with rich histories or partaking in the ancient art of creating music, I think it's important to always remember where we came from so we can better understand where we're going and appreciate what exactly it is that we're participating in. This watch feels like a nod to that very concept, and I think it's part of the reason that I love it so much. And that is all I have for you in this episode of Timekeepers. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Adam here, the Orlando Drummer, and I will catch you in the next one. Later.